Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel Kinta Ponta Pippa and today I'm going to be talking about fire prevention because uh, a lot of people have asked us uh, questions about one of our last videos where I showed you this setup that I've got here uh, on how to sort of put it together the sun's getting stronger each year I was just about to sort of say the temperature's getting hotter each year but the temperature's not the, the temperatures are about the same but the, the sun's a lot got a lot more power and it's a lot more fierce uh, and obviously the, the country's getting a lot drier there's been droughts so fires are getting worse and worse and worse Ollie and Yana that have been staying with us and kindly helping out on the farm have just about got their land that they're interested in ready for them to move on to and Ollie asked if I would uh, help him source a pump and set him up with uh, what I know about fighting fires so in a minute you're going to see a video of me putting together a pump for Ollie. Um, it's less complicated than mine because Ollie doesn't have a tractor and trailer um, like I have so I can tow around a thousand litres of water with all my pumps set up. They've got a well or a river so uh, they want something that's stationary they don't have to move it around they're going to need uh, less, less pipe work and things like that. It's not our normal video this week but I thought it would be very interesting for people to see and it would give some answers to those questions that we've been asked. Uh, so let's get on with it. So this is what comes in the kit, there's a strainer to go on the bottom of the, the suction pipe that pulls the water out of the tank. These connectors here fit on the outlet and the inlet of the pump. Rubber washers and jubilee clips, an instruction manual and a start plug spanner for keeping as a sort of a service kit for your tool. And this is a two inch bore pipe, which means the opening is two inches. The pump's now out of the box uh, and we've got it laid out here so you can see everything that we're going we're gonna to be using. Um, I'm going to put a big description at the end of the video with all the parts required. We've upgraded a lot of the parts, which you can see here. It comes with standard fittings and everything else, which are perfectly usable. But for maximum reliability and security when you're fighting a fire we've gone for the the same as what I built on my fire truck that you might have seen in other videos and I'll put a link to that video up here um, I've made that for long durability and to be sat out in the sun all the time and and to be pretty much honest slightly abused because you're pulling on everything all the time if we use some of these Chinese fittings like this one here it's made from aluminium and it's extremely thin you can hear the quality of it. That will probably break, but well, I know it will break in after a while. I've had one of these crack across here when I did it up. And then if that happens during a fire, your water is pouring out and you're not fighting a fire. And then all the money that you've spent is, is wasted. You can run an electric pump, of course you can, but often through a lot of these fires, trees falling over, you'll lose electric in your local area and then you're without a pump. I know this isn't the most environmentally friendly option in the world today, but a petrol pump like this just takes normal car petrol that goes in this tank here. It will work, it will run, and it will keep running no matter what's going on around you if there's a lack of electricity or anything like that. The only thing you do need is water. This um, is a seven horsepower motor inside it. Um, we chose a, a pretty decent pump. This is a pretty much standard irrigation pump you can buy in nearly all the shops out here. Bricamar, I don't want to sort of mention too many names, but Bricamarche and Maxmat and Agriloja, all the common shops that everybody uses out here. They'll sell these pumps. We managed to get a discount on this because I took um, Ollie to a shop that I know uh, very well and uh, they did Ollie a special deal because I, I sort of took him there and he bought he bought a lot of equipment so he got a little discount this is an affordable price and like i said we'll, we'll put the prices and everything else at the end of the description uh, this has got a two inch outlet uh, and i'm going to say it in inches because most pipe work is is described in inches so that's two inches across here the diameter that's where it 
throws the water out. It picks the water up from here and that's a two inch inlet as well. And now what we're about to do is we're about to sort of mount all these connectors onto the pump and I'm going to show you why I'm doing it. You can see how I put the, uh, the sealing tape on the threads and I shall explain as I start fitting the parts on the pump why they're there and what they're there for. Now we're about ready to uh, start attaching all the fittings uh, and this is pretty much all the tools you're going to need is just some, some basically some pliers like this which will do most of the smaller fittings but the only problem you will have is when you get up to, to larger things like this you're going to need some, some larger spanners to, to do up the fittings. You can either borrow them from a friend or you can buy things like this relatively cheaply in most little hardware stores that would cost about 10 euros something like that and you can adjust that by by turning the knob here to make it it narrower or wider uh, and these are called uh, stilsons or uh, pipe wrenches in american and when you put your fingers down it makes this tighter and tighter and well i'm sure you're going to see when i start fitting everything to it so that's the tools there and some thread sealant, some PTFE tape that we'll put around all the threads and I'll show you which way you, you apply this to the threads because when you, you fit something like this you turn it clockwise to put it on there you want to wind this on in the same direction like this because the, the last bit of tape is laying there and then when you put this on it, it turns it the right way if I was to put the tape on the other way like this when I wind this on, it'll unwind this tape from the thread. So always remember you put this on in the same direction that you wind a fitting on. And then everything should be good. But you're gonna see us doing it. So I'm hoping it'll be self-explanatory. Here's the PTFE tape. It doesn't matter which way you, you take it off the, off the roll, but what you want to do is put it like this. Hold it with your finger until you, you come round and overlap with the other piece, then it holds itself. And then you want to come round six to ten times, spreading the tape evenly over all the, the threads, which is not hard to do. And I'll make a, a bit of a mistake like that, that won't matter. When the water comes through, it'll wash that out of the way. So you don't have to worry that you've got it on super neat or tidy, like this will be absolutely fine. And that is plenty and you just pull it to snap it off now that's ready for me to start winding on the, the brass fitting you can see it's got threads inside it always start it gently so you're not cross threading it because the last thing you want to do is go and ruin the threads on the pump part because they're they're um they're pretty much all unless you go and buy a honda one for 800 euros or something then it'll be made of steel but these are chinese so these parts are aluminium and they, they can be easy to damage them so we'll wind this on until we start feeling it getting tight by hand like it is now and that's when these come in handy like this And I want this outlet sat at the top. And that's that bit ready now. So what we have got now is a reducer, which is going to go in here. Then I'm going to put another reducer in there. And then we're going to put an elbow, a 90 degree bend here. So let's get that one. And when you're doing it on these fittings that are going to go inside the piece, you have to think again that you're going to screw the piece on like this, in this direction. I want the tape to be laying like that. So when I screw it in, it's pulling the, it's pulling the tape tight to the threads. So if I can get it out. like this so you can see it that's probably more than enough don't worry about these little bits none of this is important you can let that fall off and 
and that's getting tight already because it's brass. I'm going to use these because they give me more room. I'm a mechanic so I've got lots of tools like this but you'll find most guys that do DIY or have fiddled with plumbing in their lives they'll, they'll, have, they'll have tools like this so ask a friend or a relative I'm sure you will find a, a guy that will lend you a pair of these so you buying them. Right, that's tight. Right, that's the tape on this one. You don't have to worry about it, it being on the side of the, the part there. You're mainly worried about just the, the central part there. This is absolutely fine, a little bit like that. It's not a problem, so don't worry if you, you think you've got to uh, wipe it away like I'm doing now, you don't need to do that. You can see a little bit of tape there, and it's because these are tapered, so they get tighter as you put them in, so they won't go all the way flat. They might stay apart a little bit, but if it's done up tight with a spanner and it was tight, it normally is tight. Like now, that's getting tight by hand already. And I know this top one's tight because you'll see it's going to start turning the second one below it. So everything's getting super tight now. There we go. And that reducer has made the two inch hole the correct size for this thread to go in here now. Which will go in here like this when I've put more tape on it. So now we're putting on the 90 degree bend and we want that facing in this direction. And I advise, I've seen some people do it, don't put your tool handle in there because you'll damage the threads. And this being brass, you can damage the threads fairly easily. So it's best not to do that. Hold it from the outside like this and then turn it. It might look complicated. It might look a bit complicated to some people, but leave you and me, it really isn't. Now that's getting tight, so we've got three quarters of a turn now before that will come round. There we go. Now we're ready to fit the first tap an inch and a quarter as it says there and we need because it's a female thread and a female thread we need to put one of these in here so we can connect it to here again more PTFE tape as I've just said this is a female thread and this is a male thread and you you might want to know what the difference is well that's a female thread because it looks rather like a female and that looks a bit like a man because it goes in the hole I hope that makes sense. Why are we doing this, Alex? Outlets, why are we making more? Why are we making outlets? Multiple outlets. Well, because you've got different diameters of hoses. Fighting a fire, you really only need an inch hose. Most of the, the average firemen, yes, they've got large hoses as well, but that's normally when they're um, a stationary fire, like a house fire or something like that, where they're not moving, but when they're in the forest, they're dragging a hose pipe as thick as that around. It takes three men behind them because it's hundreds of kilos of water in weight in the hoses and it's, it's hard work. They use an inch wide hose because it's much easier to pull it on the, on the ground with one person and it's enough water to stop flames. You put, put water on a flame and it goes out. So the reason we've got this, this will be for firefighting. And then he's using less consuming, less water whilst he's actually fighting the fire. And then when he wants to clean wells or anything like that, you want the maximum flow of water, not necessarily pressure. So then he will have a large tap here, which won't restrict the two inch diameter that we've actually paid the money on the pump for. And it keeps it the same diameter and he'll empty a well in, in a lot quicker time. And if he was use, using this one to empty a well, it would take longer because less water can get out. So the connectors almost all the way in. Now we're going to tighten this up. I can adjust my spanners like my spanner like this to make it bigger. We 
we've mentioned everything in inches because everything out here, even in Portugal, where they use uh, centimetres and metres, all the plumbing equipment comes in inches. Uh, if we put the, the parts in the description, we shall put the uh, inches and the millimetres dimensions in, every, in the description. And if I can find one, I'll put a link into a, an online uh, converter for inches to centimetres, if that makes it helpful for anyone. And you want to think about which way you're going to put your tap on, that there isn't a bar or, or something in the way that will affect you oper operating the, the tap. So, like that, there's nothing restricting it and I can operate that tap quite happily there. So, we'll now screw that on. Once it gets tight, don't keep using the handle or you'll bend the handle. So, and these taps have got flat edges on them. So that's nice and tight now, I'm not going to over abuse it. The tap operates nicely. It'd be nice to have it vertical, but it's absolutely fine like that. And we're going to use these fittings, fast connect fittings like this. And when the pressure's inside it, the more pressure, the more it pulls them apart, the more it locks them together. And you can literally undo them as quickly as that. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I look like I'm running my own water pump. I'm absolutely dripping in sweat because it's 42 degrees in this workshop. And I haven't got my fan on because otherwise you won't hear me. This, which you'll see us fit in a minute, will go into the, the hose. And that's the connection down there. So let's put some tape on this one. There you go. And with these, you use the, the tangs on the side to do it up. We'll leave this bit till a bit later on when I'm going to do the hoses. Now we're going to fit the, the next tap, which goes in here, which is pretty much going to be an exact copy of what we've just made, which is this piece here, and that's going to come into here. So more tape again. So you need a couple of rolls of these and we've got we've got three of them and they cost 20 pence a packet or something so and now we're doing it this way <laughs> and often with plumbing where everything's very close to each other sometimes you might find that this nut was hitting this, so I've just had to loosen that back so we can tighten this on like this and then we'll re-tighten this above it because otherwise the, otherwise the nut here can foul and hit this part and obviously you don't want to stress anything or break it. So. And now I'm going to turn this back I've got rubber protection on my on my handles, which I'm going to put in here, so it won't damage anything. Won't the threads, like I explained earlier. And now we're going to tighten that back up over there. Oh. And we can operate that tap freely, and we can operate that tap freely. We're about ready to put the other one of these on, and if you can uh, see how much I'm sweating here. You can tell how hot it is. This workshop's generally quite cool. It's about 11.30, 12 o'clock in the day. And it's that hot outside. My workshop's heating up. So you can imagine how hot it is outside. And that unfortunately is what causes a lot of the fire. So it sort of proves the point of how hot it is here. I think yesterday it was 102 degrees at one place that we went. So 
things spontaneously catch a light. And that's it, pretty much. There we go. Now we've got our two outlets. That one's going to be for the, the big hose. And this is going to be for the narrower hose for firefighting. And that's pretty much this section done. I'll come back in a minute because I need to go off and go and have something cool to drink because I'm boiling. That's the taps finished. So now we're going to get on to the suction, the pickup pipe. Which attaches here. And it's going to use this large pipe here. And it has a filter head that goes in the water. And we're just about to attach that now and we'll show you how we're going to do that. The reason we were talking about good quality fittings and everything else is this is the part that came with the, the pump. One, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's really made out of the most cheap aluminium possible. And I think if you pulled your pipe hard enough to the side, you'd probably crack this. But this is the main reason why. In fact, if I take that off, you guys can probably see it better. It doesn't fit snugly in the tube. We've just fitted one of these, which is a, a heavy duty Jubilee clip. These are not like your, your standard average Jubilee clip that you do up with a, a screwdriver, which are good. Uh, and again, I would not buy cheap Jubilee clips. You can buy these in a pound shop or a Chinese shop. Don't do it. You want good quality Jubilee clips. Otherwise they just won't hold the pressure and they'll release and then it'll pop off and it'll always pop off right when you don't need it. So we've even tried fitting this and crushing the rubber pipe with the, with the proper clamp and it's still loose. So how I've cured that is from the other green hose you're going to see shortly which is a flexible green hose i've cut a small section of that and i've placed it over the the bar fittings here and now you can see i'm actually going to have to force that in there so that's going to be nice and watertight and mainly airtight so it doesn't suck air into the pump and stop it working so let's get that in here i'll go and get the uh, the correct brand new one of these and we'll we'll get on and we'll fit it Here's the one we actually bought yesterday. The one I've just shown you was one that I had from before. Oh, so that's going to go over the hose. My new part's going in there. That's on there now. Slide the Jubilee clip up. And it's a 13mm socket. This has a little rubber gasket, goes in there, like that, and then that attaches to this here. And I won't try and do it now because the pipe's coiled up, but in a moment we'll go outside and we'll fit all of this. And when you buy the kit, it comes with this strainer goes into here and again it doesn't fit very well that's not the reason we're changing this the reason we're changing this <laughs> is it's literally it's just a strainer there's nothing else in that whatsoever to prime the pump normally you'd fill it with water and what will happen is the water will sit in here there's actually a flap in there and you fill that with water then the pump can suck but when you've got seven meters, which is the maximum length you can put of the suction hose on the front of this pump, if you buy one of these, it has a filter at the bottom again to stop bits of rubbish going in, but you can undo these. And inside is a rubber flap. And when this piece is fitted against it, because it's got that flat face on it, when I do that, I don't know if you can see through it. I can blow through it. When I put it like that, 
the rubber flap comes down and it shuts. So when you fill this tube up with water, the water doesn't run out of the end into the river or the tank that you've got. It will fill the tube up and you can actually do that with these inside the tank of water and every time you force it down you'll get water go inside it and when you lift it up the valve closes and it keeps the water in the tube so it's like a manual priming version of this and these are much better and this pipe's very heavy uh, very strong and very stiff and I found when I first bought these if you just use the plastic strainer on the end it's not heavy and the pipe sits and sometimes it actually pops up above the surface of the water and sucks loads of air in and that's not a lot of good. So this has got the weight to keep the pipe pulled down into the water so you don't pull up air. So, and this also has got a correct size barb on it. It's actually fractionally larger than the rubber pipe. So I think you might have seen me do this before in some of our other videos. We're gonna heat it up with a gas pipe and that will soften and stretch the, the rubber here to the point that we can then punch this in and then put the Jubilee clip on. All right, well that was a bit harder than expected, so I stopped filming for a second to, to beat it on there. So, again with the other, pretty self-explanatory, we're gonna put the Jubilee clip on here. And this part's going underwater, so it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, all the way to the end there is over an inch inside there and that basically this is just to stop it falling off so now we're going to start fitting the connector to the, the flexible hose um, but what we found again is the hose is a lot bigger than the actual fitting and the reason why is that's actually labeled as one and a half inches and this tube is also rated, I don't know if you're going to see it there, but it says 45 millimetres, which is an inch and a half. But the difference between companies making things in metric and imperial, the difference between metric and imperial, there's always a slight difference in the size. So what we're going to do here, that's the barbed section, which we're going to put the Jubilee clip on. make a spacer from the bit of pipe and we need to remove a little bit so that it wraps around here like this and then we'll put the next pipe on the whole lot will crush together and that will take up the distance in the Now it's a snug fit and the Jubilee clip can, can clamp that and we shouldn't get any water leaking. And I've done this on my other fire truck that I've got and my fire pump system and there's no leaks and it doesn't blow off because I'm sure someone's going to want to leave me a comment saying oh that won't, it won't hold, the, the, the pipe will blow off. Believe me, it doesn't. That is nice and tight. That's compressed in really nicely. Here's the important end of the, uh, the equation, which is a, a fireman's nozzle. It's not a professional quality one or anything like that, but it's the sort of thing you'd find in a, a block of flats or a hotel or something like that with the red coils. This is the sort of nozzle they've got on the end. It'll make a long jet and it'll make a wide fan. We've already fitted one of these in here, PTFE tape. I think you've already seen me do this earlier with the other connections, but that's it. That's fitted on there now. It's literally as simple as that. And then if you, you need more hose, you can, and you've got a second roll of this hosing, you can literally simply connect the two hoses together and then you've got 100 metres of hose or, or how many other metres you've got on your roll of, of hose. But it's as simple as that to extend your hose run. And what you can do, if you've got more hose, and you've reached the end, you can come along, connect another hose to it and roll your hose out and then you've got 100 metres of hose. It's as simple as that. That's why I recommend these fittings. And when the pump is running, they're not that easy to undo because it's, it's being pressurised and there's a little catch here which actually stops it undoing when it's, it's full of water pressure. So uh, they're a very good... Uh, they're very, very similar to what the firemen use. Very similar to the same, same principle. So 
we're going to go and try it in the garden. A quick tip uh, to keep this from sitting in the bottom of a tank and sucking all the mud up from the bottom of a river or inside your well or something like that. I pull off the handle on a bottle because these break very easily. And then I will tie a piece of string around the neck of this. And obviously you want to make sure it's tied on properly. And then we tie the bottle on about this height here. And it will act as a, a float. So when this is in the water, this will float at the level of the water here in the tank. And this will sit below the water, but not go all the way to the bottom. And as the water goes down in your tank, this will come down with it and it just saves you sucking up lots of mud. Now we're going to connect the sucker tube. This is the one that's going to pull the water from the tank. It's got an O-ring, don't forget to put that in. Make sure you get your thread started right. there's no movement in the collar it'll be fine. Now we've got to prime the pump in here which means filling the, the, the pump part with water. Don't worry there's a couple of flies in there and a, and a couple of little bits of leaves they'll be absolutely fine in here no big sticks or anything like that we're going to spill a bit of water but it won't hurt. you mustn't run this pump when this is dry it'll burn the, the bushings out inside so there we go that's all it needs put the cap back on now I'm going to put this into the tank and that's floating in the water now that bottle and that's keeping this pipe off the bottom of my tank and the, the bottle is keeping it floating so it's about eight inches below the surface of the water, which is about perfect. New engines are normally transported with no oil in them, so don't buy a new generator or a, or a water pump and start it. It will need oil. So we've topped it up with oil. This takes 15W40 oil, but I recommend you check your user manual or anything like that for those specific things, because some motors can be different. This is the on and off switch. It's up at the moment, which means it'll stop the engine running. I'm going to flick it to on, which is at the bottom, that's off, that's on, and then when we come round to the side here, this is the accelerator, this is low, that's high, this is the choke, you turn it to that side for the choke, the fuel tap is now on, and that's now ready to start. It's the first time it's ever been started, so it might take a few pulls to get the, the fuel into the carburettor and get it running, so I'm just going to try that now. What do you need a choke for, Alex? Well, when it's cold or, or initially the, the first time when you start the engine, it just helps it, it start the engine a lot better. And as soon as it's running, you turn the choke off. I think it doesn't need saying, but make sure your taps are closed or when you fire it up, it might start throwing water out. Once it's running, I will start to open one of the taps to help the air come out. So start it, that's off, that's off.
see. Ollie's trying out his new, new fire defence. And I think you can see that's going quite some way. What do you think, Ollie? Proper bit of gear. Proper bit of gear, there. Got to be a good 23 metres. Yeah. Well worth having. Well worth having on your farm or in your house. Well, as you can see, I think Ollie was quite pleased with his new pump. Uh, I feel a bit safer for him, he feels safer in himself, and I'm uh, very happy to have done it for him after the help that they've been giving us for a couple of months now. Um, so I hope that helps you guys at home, uh, or anybody that's potentially thinking about living in Portugal, a good idea of what you really ought to have on hand. Um, you'll find all the prices in the description below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already because we can see quite a lot of you are watching and you're not subscribed so go on it costs nothing help us out hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next week with another update on the farm and the goats and everything else so have a great week everybody take care bye